A very good evening to you and thank you very much for joining us this evening on yet another discussion on Health Digest. And today we discuss preterm babies and their mothers. We discuss what leads to prematurity, what leads to this mother staying for a very long period of time in hospital and what you need to know about taking care of the preterm babies and these are babies who are born before time. Now with me on, in studio to discuss this is uh, first Dr. Catherine Mutinda. Dr. Mutinda is a, is a, is a deputy medical superintendent at the Pumwani uh, Maternity Hospital. She's the head of clinical services there. She is a consultant pediatrician and the assistant secretary of the Kenya Pediatrics Association. Also with me is uh, Mr. Orina Nyakina. Mr. Nyakina is the nurse in charge of the newborn unit at the Pumwani Maternity Hospital. He is also a neonatal nurse and a kangaroo mother care trainer and champion and they, they will discuss with me the issues to do with pre-term care and newborn care and what is happening at the Pumwani at the Pumwani Maternity Hospital, I beg your pardon. Now, yesterday, Kenya marked uh, the World Prematurity Day. Uh, it joined the rest of the world in marking this day that is earmarked for all preterms. And these are babies born before 37 completed weeks. Now, these are babies who are at risk of either death or lifelong complications. And now, during this day, I talked with Khadija Abdallah, who is the, uh, sorry, who is the, UNICEF maternal and newborn specialist in Kenya and this is what she had to say about uh, newborn care and newborns in Kenya. In Kenya as you are aware newborn mortality contributes to over 40 percent of under five mortality and the original variation. Nairobi County why we are really supporting Nairobi County is one of the county that has one of the highest burdens of newborn mortality. While the national newborn mortality is at 22 per 1,000 births, Nairobi is recording over 40 per 1,000 per, per live births. But the KMC is a, a high impact intervention. Uh, it's low cost, it's easy to implement and it is addressing a big issue of preterm mortality in this country. It's not just in this country, it's a global issue. And that is where we start this discussion. And KMC, as she has said, there is the kangaroo mother care, which we shall be getting into details of what that is. But just to start this discussion from the statistics that uh, Khadija Abdallah said, where she said that uh, Nairobi has the highest burden of 40 newborn deaths per 1,000 life births. I'll start with you, Dr. Mutinda. Why is this the case? Why are we reporting such a high number of newborn deaths here in Nairobi? Uh, thank you very much for having me. Uh, one of the biggest reasons is because we have very poor health-taking behaviors among our population. They come in late and uh, preterms born away from care have a higher, higher complications. Number two and very importantly is that we at Nairobi see babies who we have not planned for. Most of the mothers will come to Nairobi to deliver, so our population increases at the time of birth, and then once they deliver, of course, they go back to the to up country. And um, I think that's what I would say at the beginning. Maybe, Mr. Arena. Mr. Arena, yes. why are we reporting such high number of deaths among newborns in Nairobi? Okay, thank you to what the doctor has said. Uh, you find, you know, as you said, that we have poor seeking behavior of medical services. You find some are not going to hospital in advance. There are some infections which a mother can have. If they are not treated in advance, they lead to delivering a preterm baby. Then another one, there are some inheritance diseases. Like if a mother suffers from diabetes, that one can lead to that mother delivering a robot with baby or a preterm. Another one, the nature of work we do, which most of the people are doing in Nairobi. You know, Nairobi is becoming too expensive to live. If you want to survive, you have to work extra number of hours to get there some money to use. So some of, those are some of the contributing factors to preterm delivery. Okay. And 
just apart from the preterm deliveries and from the numbers that we saw yesterday as preterm deliveries being the second highest cause of deaths among newborns and in Pumwani specifically, what are the other causes of deaths among these very uh, young babies? So as you said, number two is prematurity, but the leading cause is what we call asphyxia. That is um, lack of oxygen at the first minute of life. So that is due to prolonged labor and poor resuscitation mm -hmm. at birth. Uh, number three, uh, very closely, is uh, after prematurity is sepsis, that's infection. Uh, this, uh, we also mark the world, uh, world Pneumonia Day, so basically infections come in at number three. Number four are congenital anomalies. We have a lot of congenital anomalies and currently we are also trying to track them at Pumwani to see how many there are. And these congenital anomalies also come from what you said, we do not go and take care of ourselves when we are pregnant. So we have number four. Congenital anomalies. Okay. Yeah. So, Ms. Sorin, are we able to manage all these cases and all these causes of potential causes of deaths among children yes. in Kenya? Yes, some are manageable. Like now, asphyxia, you seek medical service in advance. Mm -hmm. And we have antenatal care provided where a mother, when she has realized that she's pregnant, she starts attending antenatal clinic. Mm -hmm. In the process, she would be done some checkups, ultrasound can be done, and at the end of it, if it is a congenital anomaly, can be discovered and she will get medical advice. Then, to avoid this business of delivering a baby who does not initiate breathing at birth, you seek services from a qualified, where in institution we have qualified staffs, not to go this raw class clinics where if things come worse to us is when they are sending you to a bigger hospital. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Now I want us now to get to the issue of preterms. I know we are talking about preterms, babies yeah. born before uh, seven there completed are seven weeks. completed weeks of pregnancy. Mm -hmm. So I'd like us to just break it down and mm -hmm. be able to explain who exactly are preterms and why it is mm -hmm. that they need extra Okay. Care. And I think I'll start with you, Dr. Ari. Who? What are the categories of the preterms? So a preterm is any child born before 37 completed weeks of gestation. Um, when they're born, at uh, between 34 to 37 weeks, we call them borderline preterm. Below that, we call them, uh, uh, below 28 weeks, we call them extreme preterms. Mm -hmm. Now, there's another category of babies who are usually small for gestational age. They come out smaller than they should be at that uh, time. For example, when we expect you at 40 weeks of gestation, we expect you to be at around three kilos and above, you find someone at one kilo at three weeks at that time. Mm -hmm. So those ones we call for small for gestational age and we go by their kilos. Mm -hmm. So we have anybody that is below 2,500 grams, we call them low birth weight. Mm -hmm. And extreme low birth weight is below 1,000 grams. Mm -hmm. okay. So those two sides, mm -hmm. dates, and wait and wait. Okay. Yes. And uh, Ms. Torina, yes. what kind of care do this uh, category of babies need? Uh, first, we need to understand the clinical features on how to identify who is a, a preterm baby. Mm -hmm. As the doctor has said, those babies who are born below 2,500 grams. Then there are some features the head is big, they don't have and the skin is shy. Then, generally, the skin is red. So it means what? There is a tendency of losing a lot of heat. So the best need for this baby is warmth. Warmth is mandatory. Number two, free from infection. Because we have seen the skin is thin, so and the immunity of this baby is not fully developed. Mm -hmm. So that is the need they need that to be taken care of free from infection. Breathing, the respiratory system is not fully developed. The lungs are immature. Now there is a need for breathing to be taken care of. Another one, feeding. Mm -hmm. We start feeding this baby fire and tube, tube, nasogastric tube feeding. Mm -hmm. All this one put together, there is a possibility that this baby, as much as was born a preterm, will survive 
and come to live as another person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And do we have uh, the, the necessary and the qualified staff to provide this kind of care that Mr. Orina is uh, describing? Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. We do have all the care that, as you said, we start from the head, from taking care of the neurological uh, issues, the breathing, the, the gut issues, all the way to the neuromuscular issues. Everything is available in Kenya. Mm -hmm. We have qualified uh, um, neonatologists in this country, and the numbers are growing. Uh, apart from that, we have also subspecialists in pediatrics in the different facets, whether it is the respiratory medicine, we have subspecialists in pediatric respiratory medicine. Mm. So every specialty is here. So those are the doctor's yes. specialties, but you also uh, the, the other of uh, staff yes. that are required yes, to take care of these babies. Because mm. if you just look at the doctors only, mm -hmm. what about the other cadres? Do we as, have the requisite as, numbers? Yes, as you started very well by introducing Mr. Orina, Mr. Orina is a neonate or nurse. That's a specialized nurse who takes care of neonates. Mm -hmm. the, those numbers are increasing. We actually spe subspecialize in neonatal care. We also have people like support, we call them the, uh, the occupational therapists, the physiotherapists. All those people are there in this country and the numbers are increasing by the day. Mm -hmm. We are getting to a position where we can offer this care when it comes from the human resource point of view. Mm -hmm. On top of that, even the equipment point of view, we mm -hmm. can offer all this. Mm -hmm. The question is, our our population, can they just come to the right people? Can they come to the hospitals? Let's not um, go and look for healthcare elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Come to your Kenyan hospitals. We have the qualified staff, we have the qualified equipment, we are there for you, and at Pumwani we even don't charge you for it. Mm -hmm. So why not just come and get it right? Okay. Mr. Rina, it looks yes. like you had a yes. point uh, to want, add there. Yes, yes, I want to add something. Mm -hmm. What the doctor is saying is very correct. Mm -hmm. This preterm baby is like anybody else. Yeah. Is like an, taking care of an, another condition, whereby there is multidisciplinary mm -hmm. kind of management, whereby a group of different disciplines are involved in taking care of this baby, whereby nutritionists are involved, mm -hmm. occupational therapists are involved, mm -hmm. counselors. Remember. It is not the wish of a parent to deliver a preterm baby, and it is somehow torturing. Mm -hmm. You have delivered a, a tiny one, mm -hmm. another mother has delivered 3.5, 4 kgs. Then now when you try to convey yourself, why me? Mm -hmm. This mother is psychologically done, done what? Disturbed. The family at large, the community. So if all these people are put together, mm -hmm. they come, they counsel the mother, they give the necessary care, we are going to give the best to this preterm baby mm -hmm. and to the family and at large the community and at the end of it we build our country Kenya. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. I'll take you back Dr. Tari, to yes. where you say we have the requisite uh, number of staff and we know mm -hmm. this year Kenya has actually been plagued by a lot of strikes by the healthcare yeah. workers, the doctors were on the streets for 100 days, the nurses were there for more than 150 days. Mm -hmm raising a number of issues mm -hmm. and one of them was that we do not have adequate staff. Mm -hmm. So when we say we have the numbers and they are great, mm -hmm. are they enough for the population that we have in Kenya, which is over 45 million Kenyans? Uh, we have a very low number of doctors for the population that we have. But that does not mean that we don't have the expertise. The expertise is there. What is happening is the disenfranchisement of the healthcare providers. When you have a population that doesn't trust its own, and that is very disenfranchising, as you said, uh, at Pumwani you will come and you'll get the best services, yet you'll find a lot of people malaligning the same institution. The question is, after you go to some semi-private um, quack places and you end up at Pumwani and we sort you out, is it the problem of Pumwani or is it the health-seeking behavior of the client? Mm -hmm. We need to address that issue. Let's have Kenyans seek health on time. And then let's look at the other side, the human resource side. Let's not only grow the expertise, as I was saying, the expertise is growing, but also the numbers, and also get the numbers in the right places. Mm -hmm. We make a lot of good doctors, and Kenyan doctors are sought for out, outside there. So they get disenfranchised and they leave and our population is really big. We need every Kenyan to come and take care of Kenyans. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's 
as Kenyans trust Kenyans. Mm -hmm. And then after that, let's now grow the numbers. Mm. Mr. Orina, your comment on that? Yeah, it's almost the same. And let us also respect of our own, mm. as the Dr. is saying. If we have come to recognize our institution, the problem comes, Puman is bad, Puman is bad. No, it's not Puman which is bad. It is where, ask where the source was. Mm -hmm. You want to, if you want to finish something, dig to the root bottom of it, then uproot it, then you would have done without. Remember, this client who has come to our institution started from somewhere, mm -hmm. that small, small clinic in the village. When she, come, she stays there for one or two days, she does not succeed by delivering. Then there she has been mismanaged. She is referred now to Puman. When she comes, she doesn't have anything showing what has been done. Then she tells you, I've not gone anywhere. But when you're trying to do your examination, you find this one, indeed something has been done. At the end of it, if the outcome is poor, the problem goes now direct to Puman. Then our people are not understanding. Now they give you the problem. But if they could have understood the root cause, and the end of the root cause, then we would have done everything, and now we could have been in a level that we are saying now we are offering quality services to our citizens. Mm. Yeah. Okay. I think I'll leave that discussion <laughs> there at the moment. Mm -hmm. And now, Pumani has a, a capacity of 150 yeah. in yes. the newborn unit. Yes. And as of yesterday, when we were there during the celebration, you had uh, 43 babies. Now, I'd like just to know what kind of outcomes do you see when taking care of preterms, or what outcomes are likely mm -hmm. to happen uh, when having uh, admitted a preterm and mm -hmm. started them on care? What possibilities do you tell mothers are like, is likely to happen to their babies? Okay, when we start, as I started by saying, when we start, we start by assessing the kind of child we've gotten. We can get a preterm who is by weight small, but essentially term. That means they, do, they have mature lungs, mature everything. Mm -hmm. So for such a child, we told the mother, we need you to be here for a short while, it will be shorter than the rest, but we want to gain weight. These are the ones we call growers. We just want to feed them, see that they are stable, and then they go home. Uh, we usually wait for 1.8 kilos. So that's what, what we give them. Now, there's the other one which we said we are going to assess and we find their true preterms, that they are actually born before their time. Now, the true preterms are what uh, Mr. Orino was uh, referring. They are preterm all the way from the brain or to the feet. Their lungs are not ready, their brain is not ready, their stomachs are not ready. So we have to make them ready. How do we make them ready? We're going to take our time to do things like continuous positive airway pressure to make sure that their lungs stay open. We're going to feed them slowly, measured feeds, prime their gut so that we can get them going. We're going to take care of their eyes because some of these children, because they were born early, they get complications like uh, yellowness, which is called jaundice. We're going to take care of that. So we take the mother through all the possible, possible complications, especially when they have a true preterm. And then we go all the way to what we were talking about yesterday, about kangaroo mother care. Now, our admission <coughs> rate, we admit, um, we are a baby-friendly uh, baby -friendly hospital, meaning we only admit babies who need care. So, of all the babies born at Pumwani, only around 10 to 20 percent will end up in the unit. Of those 10 to 20 percent, only around 30 percent are preterm. My mortality rate in the whole unit it is 8 percent, meaning out of uh, the 200, 300 babies I have in the unit, I'll lose around 10 to 20 babies. Mm -hmm. So, most of the time, I have very good results. Our smallest baby was uh, 700 grams. She's now in uh, preschool. She comes to visit. And our oldest baby, I think you've met her. She's mm -hmm. now in her 30s. She was... She's, she's 29. She's actually. 29, yes. yes. She was born at 1.5, spent uh, 45 days with us. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we usually prepare our mothers from what we have received. Is it a true preterm by date or is it a true preterm by weight? Mm -hmm. Then we talk about it. As you said, the other team members, the counselors are very important, mm -hmm. spiritual leaders, the family, the father. Mm -hmm. All these people talk to the mother so that um, on average, 
-hmm. if it is a by weight, two weeks, <coughs> three weeks, depending on how they came in. Okay. Yes. Uh, Ms. Sorina, what complications do you see with these preterms in the unit? Uh, before I even come to the complications, mm -hmm. the ones has talked about the 1.5 kgs, who is now 29 years old, mm -hmm. and she stays in uh, 45 days in the unit. Remember, those are those days when yeah. we do not have this concept of kangaroo mother care, mm -hmm. which is now our focus, and it's really working. We'll, we'll get yes. to that. We'll now, get to kangaroo. About the complications, these babies do develop. Mm -hmm. One is about the respiratory system. They develop respiratory distress because the lungs are immature. One, they develop another, they develop another one we call necrotizing enterocolitis, which now around the CIT system. Which you have to, what is necrotizing <laughs> enterocolitis? You know, he, this is a very uh, massive word. Uh, I don't know. I can put it like no, uh, when the gut is not way. when the gut is not ready, and then you put out. It's like when you put a load on a, on on a, on skin. Let's say you have skin, and then you, I, I press on your skin. I I remove nice. all the all the gas from it. I remove all the oxygen from, from it, so I get it to rot. So basically, mm -hmm. the, the, by putting a load of food in an immature gut, you distend it. And by distending it, you, remo you remove the blood from it, so it starts so rotting. It starts, it starts dying, dying off, dying yes. off yes. and rotting. Yes. Yes. Then another complication, they develop chondy, that yellow coloration that I was talking about, mm -hmm. which reads, if it's not well managed again, mm -hmm. it leads to brain damage. Mm -hmm. And at the end of it, you don't want to go home with a baby who is not going to be somebody in the future. You want somebody who's going to be to exert in his or her lifetime. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those oh. are some of the complications of preterms. Mm. And yeah. are these like the commonest complications that you see around? Yeah, basically those are the commonest. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. Now getting to kangaroo mother care, I know it's really advocated for being a cost effective measure yeah. and it's easy to implement, mm -hmm. it's easy for mothers to adopt. So just mm -hmm. explain to us what kangaroo mother care, I know you are a champion and a trainer on kangaroo mother care. Yeah, I was trained about two years ago and uh, I really embraced it, first of all. You need to embrace something, then it comes out of you. This KMC is kangaroo mother care. It's skin-to-skin -skin contact of the baby and the mother. The baby, you want to dress the baby on a diaper, socks, and the, the cap. Simply because you want to protect the head from losing a lot of heat. Mm -hmm. The feet the same, and the diaper, to protect from wetting you. Mm -hmm. Then you open the, the mother, you have done your counseling. The mother should be willing. That one is key factor, a willing mother. Mm -hmm. Then you have done your counseling, the mother has accepted. Now you bring the baby, you put it in that position, skin to skin, the mother's skin and the baby's skin mm -hmm. come into contact. Now you tie the baby using a razor. You tie at the side because at the back it's uncomfortable when the mother is sleeping. Now, it is skin to skin. It is raw cost. It is effective. It is safe and of greater impact. Why am I saying it's of greater impact? The baby is going to gain weight faster. The one we have seen average 15 to 30 grams per kg body weight per day. Mm -hmm. If this baby has a Part weight of 1.5 kilograms in a span of less than 10 days, this baby is going to gain weight and want to decide this baby at around 2 kgs. Mm -hmm. And the mother is going to be happy and go home. Mm -hmm. In a short while, we will see the benefits of kangaroo mother care. Basically, that is how I can say kangaroo mother care mm -hmm. is, or what it is. As much as some have been thinking, it is Kenya Meat Commission. <laughs> <laughs> And then yes. it's kangaroo because yeah. it's picked from that the, the kangaroo, kangaroo animal. and the baby. Yeah, the one which is found, found in Colombia, the, the in puts Australia, the baby in the yes. pouch. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And Dachar, is this only an intervention that is done in the hospital or do mothers continue doing the same while at yes, home? Yes, they should continue at home. One of the biggest uh, things that kangaroo mother care gets us is a confident mom. 
because mom is there and taking care of the baby, it's no longer a health worker's baby. It's mom's baby. So even when she's in the hospital, we support her to do it. So we give her all the equipment and all the things that she needs to do it. So when she goes, I actually wanted to say that, as you can see, Mr. Orina is daddy. <laughs> so yeah. it is a kangaroo care for anybody who wants to anybody. do it. Even grandma we have even husbands who come in and practice it in the unit mm -hmm. it's about just making that child have that human touch okay yes okay now the other issue about taking care of preterms that really seems not to be addressed most of the time mm -hmm. and from the mothers is that the mothers the focus is always on the baby mm -hmm. the mother seems to be forgotten yes. and just uh, brief is there any support that is given for the mothers because this is a baby they take care of closely for a very long period of time. Yes. Uh, at Pumwani, when you have a preterm baby, you're going to be visited by a lot of people. And one of the people who's going to visit you is another mother who's had a preterm. Uh, we have mothers we call champion mothers. They had had their preterms and their preterms have grown up. So they, they come and do what we call social corporate responsibility. They just come by and say hi, like the lady. She works for another company and she just comes by to tell the other people, oh, don't worry, it will be well. So she'll come uh, on, um, Man, uh, on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So one of the places that you'll meet these mothers is at the antenatal clinic. Because there's nobody written on the forehead that I will have a preterm baby, we tell all the mothers, just in case you get a preterm baby, mm -hmm. that baby will be fine if you take care of them through kangaroo. Mm -hmm. Number two, once you have the preterm baby, we're in the unit and we are taking care of you, the mothers will come on Thursday and they'll talk to you and tell you it will be well. So you'll get social worker support, you'll get another mother support, you'll get the, psych uh, the uh, psych uh, psych uh, psychology support, the doctors and the nurses will be supporting you. In the community, we're actually now thinking of entering into the community where we have actually at Pumani trained uh, community health workers, where the community health worker will be coming to visit just to find out are you faring on well. Mm -hmm. The other thing is we actually do not talk to the mother alone. We only say, ma'am, who is your support system? Is it your mother? Yeah. Mm -hmm. As in the grandmother? Is it your husband or your spouse? Bring who you think is a support system. Mm -hmm. And we talk to them together. So when mother <coughs> needs to sleep, mommy needs a break, mm -hmm. the baby is not left. There is someone else. That mother is key. As he, she, he said, the key is the mother. Okay. If the mother is not happy, Mm -hmm. They don't have a baby. All right, yes. thank you. Now, finally, uh, we, I know this mother stay in hospital for long. Yes. It requires some financial input. Who pays for this? Our this. taxpayers. Mm -hmm. Our taxes pay. Mm -hmm. um, there's an under five policy who, that says that the under fives don't get charged for anything. That does not mean it doesn't cost something. Mm -hmm. So this is a weight that uh, we feel should be the package, the preterm care and the neonatal care needs to be packaged in a way that the insurance company and the government actually knows the true costs mm -hmm. of taking care of a prem because it doesn't end at the hospital. Mm -hmm. These mothers, as you see, they will be coming to see the hosp in the hospital every two weeks, then later every month. Mm -hmm. this ma these babies are going to have supplements throughout their first year of life and even longer. All these things are cost implications to them parents. Mm -hmm. So if we do not address how we're going to take care of them, I think one of the best things we can do is look at NHIF and say, if you have preterm baby, this is the package we are giving to you. Mm -hmm. For the visits, for the uh, complementary care, what we haven't touched on is that these babies, as they grow, you need to check on their neurodevelopment. You need to check that they are actually catching up with their peers. You need to check on their eyes whether they are hearing, whether they are seeing, all these things, they cost a pretty penny. And if we do not address it, that's why you find that the mother gets, doesn't have money to come for the clinic. Not that she doesn't want, but she wants to come, but she doesn't have how to. Okay. Mr. Rina, your final okay. comments? There is also another initiative which we have started in Pumwani, and it is really working out well. Because as the doctor is saying, uh, none plans to deliver preterm. Mm -hmm. And the thing, we have responsive factors. So one, can, you can be involved in a road accident, God forbid. Then you start to deliver pains, you end up delivering a preterm. There is an initiative we have started of in engaging the expectant mothers from the antenatal clinic. We are teaching them what kangaroo mother care is. To have that concept while they are expectant. In, in a 
in case one delivers a preterm, mm -hmm. you are as you as a health worker, you are going to explain that concept to her. She will understand it fully, mm -hmm. and she will embrace it, okay. and she will take care. Because again, these champion mothers, they mm -hmm. give the what they have undergone, and you see they now that the babies are pouncing. Yes. Then another thing. <coughs> I think. I'll, sorry. Just very very briefly. <laughs> Yeah, another thing, they are coming with their spouses, which is very encouraging. Mm -hmm. I encourage male involvement. They mm -hmm. are coming, good mm -hmm. number. Congratulations for those mothers who are coming with their spouses, because it is teamwork. Mm -hmm. It is none f for one. It's just teamwork. Family members, some who come with them to the clinic, mm -hmm. congratulations, keep it up. And at the end of it, we are going to have a well-informed community leading to a well-informed country. Okay. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for taking your time this evening to discuss with us on preterm care and also addressing the issues on the mothers who deliver preterms. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. We were discussing uh, preterm uh, preterm babies, these are babies born before 37 completed weeks of uh, pregnancy. And with me was Mr. Orina Nyakina, who is the nurse in charge of the newborn unit at the, Pumwani, at the Pumwani Maternity Hospital. And also Dr. Catherine Mutinda, who is a consultant pediatrician and the deputy med medical superintendent, who is the head of clinical services at the Pumwani Maternity Hospital. Until next time, when we shall have another discussion on other issues that affect uh, your health on Health Digest. I wish you a very good night and thank you very much for joining us. Uh, God bless. I'm Dr.